Welcome to Trial by Wine. We take a closer look at crimes that highlight how fascinating humans can be. Schmitty, Swanee and Clarkey visit crimes and run them through their jury of three, debating both sides of the case to agree an appropriate, if totally fictitious, sentence. Please be advised, Trial by Wine may include explicit or disturbing content and will include drunken rambling. Listener discretion is advised. All right, how are we? Very well, how are you? Yeah, Mm. good. Very well over here too. Excellent, excellent. Any news, anything exciting happening? I got a new car during the week. Oh, wow. That's good news. Yeah, it was fancy. It's a new work car, but it's still fancy. Is it a cube? It's not a cube, unfortunately. They're not. Well, you've lost my interest. (laughs) (laughs) Now that'd be a good work car, wouldn't it? Uh, A cube. mm. I don't even know who makes it. Is it a Renault or something? Particularly if my job was abducting people and killing (laughs) them, cube would be perfect. (laughs) Well, that's exciting. Mm, It is. Yes. What about you, Lot? Oh, we're, oh, finished off my week at work because uh, I'm now on leave, thank goodness. Had two people arrive from England for the wedding and Ooh. we're already in wedding setup and festivities, which pre-starting the recording, I was saying I'm feeling a bit tired. Aww. But I went to, I'm taking them up to Eldon, so I'm hoping to get a, at least a day of a little less carry-on. Should be good. And you, Swanee? It's been a bit of a weird week. I've had sick children home from school already. We're in week two of term. Ah, sick dog. I did go and see Sting last night in concert, which was very nice. So it was a nice sort of change of pace after being, you know, doing housework and motherly duties and all that kind of jazz. So that was good. Well, according to the story you told us before we started, it was quite (laughs) the change of pace, I would say. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, yes, yes. You're not wrong. It was quite quite, (laughs) quite a change of pace, but it would lead nicely into what are we drinking because I can tell you what I'm drinking. What are you drinking? Coke, no sugar. Yes. And in fact, I haven't had one yet. And I've got a second one lined up, ready to go. (laughs) I've called in for the old hangover management. What about you, boys? What are you drinking? Hangover. We're having a Tatachilla rose from the McLaren Vale. That looks very pretty. It's very pretty. It's very light. It actually says on it light and fresh rose. Very nice. It's only 9% alcohol. So, which brings me to my question. Did was there a slight shift over the last weekend away from zero percent? Several, several times. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I might have picked up on that. Mm. Yeah. Fell hard yes. off that wagon. Yeah. We did. Yeah. We did think a lot about going and getting another bottle of zero, but we just didn't get to Dan Murphy's. Big oh, um, I have enough. an image of these pair jumping off a like a moving wagon, just rolling off it like <laughs> 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 yeah, full speed, yeah. like. Eight Absolutely. horses pulling it. Correct. Yeah. What yeah. are we doing on this wagon? Get yeah. off it, quick! It's, oh my god, it's not even a wagon. It's a Nissan Cube. <laughs> <laughs> Precisely. Uh, yes. And Schmidt, yeah. what about you? Well, yes, I have. I went from sort of like you guys, although I think I was a bit longer in my abstinence. I've gone from about seven or eight weeks of almost no alcohol to four (laughs) nights solid since my friends arrived from the UK. And I've had one little hangover on Friday and then to, to miraculously, I just feel very tired today. I was going to do the whole Carla and no, I can't drink. But then I thought, ah, fuck it. So I'm <laughs> drinking a uh, vodka cruiser, but it's not a mango chutney. This is a no. mixed berry one. And it's just because that's what I, mixed, mixed berry. berry. Oh. But that's I what I had. monster berry. It's a bit no, no. For you. But, but remember, they are only 70 calories. So I thought, oh, well, I'm making some allowance anyway. All right. So I suppose we should introduce ourselves just before we crack on. I'm Schmitty. I'm Swanee. And I'm Clarky. And together we are. Trial by wine. wine. All right, cool. Now, Clarky, what do you got for us today? Well, in six months' time, we will actually be on our cruise. And so I'm continuing with the cruise theme. So hopefully no one's getting sick of cruise themes. Although I must say, the more I research these, the more or the less attractive a cruise becomes. (laughs) <laughs> so I'm going to tell you the story of Laurie. In Contes. four weeks' time, I go on a cruise. But cheers, yeah, thanks well, for that. that's true. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, at least you're not doing the research, right? You're just hearing true, the story. So I'm going to tell you the story of uh, Laurie Kakontis and Mickey Kanasaki. Who? But, <laughs> you won't know it. 
So I'll tell you my, my sources. So uh, NBC Los Angeles, Oxygen.com, DailyMail.co.uk, The Cinemaholic, Medium.com, Heavy. Oh, this is a good one. OCregister.com, OCweekly.com, and wow. mirror.co.uk. Let me start. So Miki Kanasaki met her husband, Laurie Kakontis, while working as a paralegal at a Los Angeles law firm. Laurie was a well-known attorney and the two fell in love quickly. They married in 1995 uh, and she was his second wife at the time. And however, the relationship wasn't to last and they divorced mm. in 2002 after Lonnie was caught being unfaithful. Mm. The two kept living together, sharing the home whilst working to untangle untangle their assets. That'd be tough, wouldn't it? Can I just check? Uh, is Lonnie the man? Lonnie's the man. And yeah. Mickey yeah. is Mickey's the lady, Mickey, the woman. Yeah, M I C A I. It's funny because when you first said their names, I completely yeah, assumed I'm the other way around. Mickey's yeah. the woman. Lonnie is the Lonnie is the bloke. Yeah, okay, well, Lonnie. I look forward to you both continuing to do that all the way through this story. <laughs> you, know me, I just call it, you know me, I just yeah. turn change their names entirely. Maria, then Maria their, and oh, Lonnie. So bad. Yeah. <laughs> that same year, Lonnie went onto a dating website and met Amy Nguyen, a soft-spoken Vietnamese immigrant and school teacher. The two struck up an intimate relationship, frequenting, and I won't, this is not my phrase, but I do mm. like it, Frequenting cheap no-tell motels. Oh. Ah. <laughs> no I know. Motels. Yeah, I've not, I've never, I don't I've think I've ever that. heard oh. no-tell motel. I, I get it by the hour or something. Yeah. By the hour. I've heard it by the hour, yeah. but yeah, yeah. no-tell. You don't tell. need a credit card, it's only cash. And I like <laughs> that it rhymes. No-tell motel. It sounds a bit sordid. Yes. And, of course, Mickey uh, initially had no idea about it. After a while, the two went public with their relationship, and in 2005, they married in Las Vegas, making Amy his third wife. Towards the end, 2005, Lonnie left Amy and moved back in with Nikki. Oh. Hang on, hang on, hang on. He's gone back to his second wife from his third yes. wife. Yes, yes. Lonnie and Mickey decided to give it a second go. However, it wasn't going so well. The police were called on several occasions due to domestic violence. Mm. It was reported that Mickey was the one who initiated the violence in those scenarios. Okay. Okay. After one such visit by the police, Lonnie decides to try to patch things up by suggesting the two go on a romantic getaway and start afresh. That'll Mickey, do it. Yep. I Mickey know you agrees. Just the police are being called, but I've got an idea. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. <laughs> you have me. Have yeah. I got an yeah. idea for you? Yeah. <laughs> Mickey agrees, and they book a Mediterranean cruise aboard the Island Escape. It was unusual for Lonnie to do something so indulgent, and he spent mm. lots of time picking out the right cruise with a balcony room so the two could enjoy the ocean views. And I must say, Uh-oh. we, we oh, got, got very excited view. about the yeah. idea of a balcony room. <laughs> yeah, yeah, balcony, yeah, yeah. 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 So so every, got- every time I've ever been on a cruise, I've had a balcony, but, yeah, I can yeah. almost feel like well, I know where this is going. Mm. Yeah. We've got it this time <laughs> around. We've got a, what I think they call it a sunset balcony, and it's because it's at the back of the boat. So right. it points out. I'll probably hear the noise of the engines all the time. Anyway. And do they Just always make now. sure that the sun sets to the back of the boat so that they're bloody better otherwise it's not advertising. I um I was so excited when we decided to get a balcony room and the more of this research I've done of these stories, a balcony room is less and less attractive. I think no, you it's like lovely. nestled away in the middle of the boat. Oh no, no, no. Not if it's rough, because then you get all the feeling you of being are gonna be like high alert. And- they are. They're going to be terrified. Suspicious behaviour, yeah. locking the doors, checking we'd save them. God. Well, can we go to the nightclub? No, we can't. No. No. <laughs> what time is it? Bed. Bed now. Lock yeah, the doors. Yeah. Yeah. We better not go to the nightclub because Carla will judge us. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you can't go on the first night. Go on the first night with the kids at home. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, I, I don't do think that. I don't think this would sit comfortably with Carla. <laughs> <laughs> we might we might have to text you before every decision we make. <laughs> Just let Just us thinking. know where you are. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is, do you think this... it'd be all right? No. Yeah. Go back Thoughts? to your room. Thinking we might head down to the nightclub. <laughs> is this A safe and B acceptable behaviour? <laughs> I'm in the toilet. We've just met these nice guys. No, abort now. Get out. Get out. (laughs) Carla, do you know what GBH is? (laughs) And what are the side effects? Um, Right. So the cruise departs from Spain. So on the 21st of May 2006, the two fly from Minnesota 
via London to Spain to meet the boat. On the first day, they set sail for Italy whilst enjoying the entertainment on board, which is probably one of those, what was the last what Lost Lock called, a sunset cocktails or something, remember? That, oh, um, oh, no, no, yeah. oh, no, the first night one, you had a name for yeah. it, you knew that. The Sail Away. The sail Away Party. The sail Away Party, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So that's probably Do you know what? Like. I actually saw people that I know from school. They went on a, a small cruise this week, like to trial it. I think they went from Sydney to Melbourne and they did, they posted their photos leaving Sydney Harbour and called it the Sail Away Party or whatever else. Yeah. So I was like, oh, oh I really? know what one of those is now. Is, is that the party where they just play Enya over and over again? <laughs> 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 not, not, not much of a party. So they also did a day excursion to Sicily. On the evening of May the 25th, they enjoyed dinner and shared a bottle of wine. They went to the ship's casino and watched a show before heading back to their cabin. Carla, sounds about standard. All, all above board behaviour so far? So far, yes. About standard yep. for the first night, yep, yep. Yep. Although you missed the bit where they raced to the restaurant so that they could book in advance. Yes. Oh, was, the first, was, was that the first night, though? <laughs> you got to do that when you first get on board, yes. Did this, that, did, was that the first night? No, they had the no. sail away party and then they yeah. had Oh, then the next one. Okay, other, right, yeah, yeah, that yeah, makes yeah. more sense because I was going to say they've travelled a fair bit of distance if they've gone from... Spain down to Sicily, fair enough. Yeah. Okay, Got so all, all safe up until now. Good. Yep. yep. Early the next morning, Lonnie mm-hmm. alerted the crew that Mickey was missing. <laughs> oh, the, that old chestnut. <laughs> he doesn't muck around. He said Mickey had left the room just after midnight to get a cup of tea and he'd taken a sleeping pill. When he woke up, Mickey wasn't there and hadn't returned to bed. So a full-scale search began, but there was no sign of Mickey. The only explanation was that somehow she'd fallen overboard. She's out there somehow. swimming. <laughs> like the man. Somehow. She's, she's doing the old, you know, treading water. Thinking, yeah, yeah. Oh, someone comes along at some point. Yeah, that's yeah. right. I'll just bob around here for a bit. I'm assuming this is a really like a, one of these ships that we've talked about being really high. So do we know what level they're on? Because it's literally like stories. If you fell off out of a thing, you're falling multiple stories into the water. Yeah, yeah, it was, oh it God, was certainly. It's terrifying me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So like, this you, is the it's not hitting concrete. I don't, I'm, I'm scared. You have to walk oh. around like a life jacket on the whole time just in case. <laughs> I swear I'm going to be terrified on the balcony every time I'm there because I'm scared of heights anyway. <laughs> You'll just be like, well, it depends on how deep it is, right, because they're generally, the only one I went on, when I took mum and a friend of mine on a P&O, the balcony was huge. It was quite deep. But generally they're only like five or six feet out. So you'll just get to the door and we'll be like, come and look. And you're like, no, nah, I'm not going near the edge. Yeah. I'll be like this up against the glass. <laughs> <laughs> I'm safe here. I feel okay here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Lonnie told authorities that perhaps Mickey had been tipsy from the wine they'd had that night and had stumbled overboard. How you high are the, are the yeah. barristers? They're at least 1.4 metres high. You don't stumble over those. I'd like them to be about 1.8 metres high. That would make <laughs> Am I right? I'm, make, I'm making a massive assumption here, but is Mickey Asian? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sounded like it. I can imagine, it sounds like an yeah. Asian name. I could just imagine a tiny little yeah. Asian lady. Stumbling over a 1.4 metre high. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure when she's not. four foot tall. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> but, of course, just, just in case that wasn't convincing enough, he also suggested she had a history of depression and perhaps she'd taken her own life. Let's just throw that in there. I'm going to yeah, yeah. you, which way do you want to go with that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'll, just, I'll give you options. Oh, well, I guess that's that then. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> thanks, thanks for your feedback. <laughs> thanks. I've got a um, shower now. I've got to oh, go for that. Funnily oh, enough. Now, now that you say that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's got to be one of those two. Couldn't be anything else. Cruise crimes, Jesus. Um, yep. I know. Like, <laughs> fucking hell. I'd never do never after this I'm not this episode I'm going to do a couple more I think but then anytime I'm going to do something I'm never going to research crimes yeah, about it before that's a good good idea yeah yeah yeah, yeah. that's a yeah. good learning to take from this exercise after Correct. not before mm. yeah. yeah so anyway the idea that she'd taken her own life was a suggestion that her family strongly denied after hearing of Mickey's disappearance authorities searched the cruise ship from top to bottom and were unable to find any trace of Mickey on board anywhere. And they know that if she's in the water, the odds of finding her are slim to none. Yeah. So they decide they'll question Lonnie a bit further. However, without any evidence, he was quickly released and sent to stay in a hotel in Naples while authorities investigate Mickey's on-board <sighs> disappearance. Not having a bar of it, after one night at the hotel, Lonnie gets on a plane and heads back to California on the 27th of May. Whoa. Instead of going home, he, he goes to Amy. The New Year's house where Shockers. the couple resume their intimate relationship. Uh, 
I'm can. really shocked. Really yeah. deeply yeah. shocked. I'm, I'm yeah. not shocked at all. I just can't <laughs> work out what the point, and maybe you'll get to this, but what was the point of going back to Mickey and going through all of this if he just goes straight back to Amy? Well, I, now that you asked the question, I want you to think about the answer to that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I was and thinking more along the lines of the tangled Just assets. Life insurance. Yeah, yeah, yeah correct. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Tell us all this time. Yeah. <laughs> you now need to start introducing that. We've got so many now. That must be another one of your little sound bites. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But shoot, here we go. Life insurance policy. Right. Oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so on the same day he heads back to California, the crew of a search vessel recovered Mickey's body. Oh. She'd been floating in the Mediterranean Sea just off the coast of Paola, Italy. Yeah. And autopsy I mean, not was... Paola, Italy, yuck, but yuck, oh, yeah, she was no, floating in the sea. not Paola, Italy. An autopsy was ordered and the doctor who conducted it stated the injury she suffered to the base of her neck, including a broken bone and severe hemorrhaging, resulted from a violent action that was continued on for a period of time. <gasps> he beat her to death. As well as a blunt force trauma to her head. No, she just tripped over. Yeah. Maybe hit her head. She, she fell backwards off the balustrade the first yeah. six times trying to get over it. Some of it could have been if she'd fallen and hit something on the way down. And also I mean, it, when you hit fall at a height like that, you are basic. When you hit the water, it, if you're not doing yeah. a pin drop or a safety drop, and even that would be bad, yeah. you know, you can, some of that, Massive wedgie. at least some of that trauma. But the fact that you said it was sustained. Along with that. Mm -hmm. Mickey's lungs were full of air, meaning that she was dead before she hit the water. Yeah. Right. Her lungs being full of air also caused her to float, meaning that she was easily found. Mm -hmm. Had she drowned, her lungs would have been filled with water and she would have sunk, making it almost impossible to find her. Ultimately, it was determined that she had been strangled. (sighs) Oh, so that um, trauma around the base of her neck and the bone that was broken, there's a little bone in your neck somewhere that usually is what indicates strangulation. I can't remember the name of it. <laughs> it's like a tiny little... How does she know this shit, honestly? <laughs> I listen it, to too many it, other it, podcasts. Uh, it's beyond disturbing is now. It really is. Is. <laughs> it's just no, there's sick. some very Swanee, small... do you want to just start doing our own Almost... podcast? She scares me. <laughs> I don't mind doing it as long as I'm in a different state. I think I'm safe. <laughs> but it does worry me for others. Well, Wiggers told me about it. No, um, <laughs> it's like a wish... It's not a wishbone, Don't but it's... Don't fucking start with Wiggers. <laughs> <laughs> Wiggers. It was, uh, it's like a little, not a wishbone, but a, it, that's what I'm, it, I think of. But there's some tiny little bone Ooh. in your throat or your neck that when you are strangled, that is usually how they determine strangulation. So when you said that there was a bone broken, maybe that was the bone in question. Right. Yes. All right so, so, what, so when you are in that sort of thing, if you can avoid snapping yeah. that small bone, then you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, then no one will know. Good, good to know. Good to yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I don't you want to tried... go overboard here. Have you ever successfully not broken that bone when strangling someone? <laughs> <laughs> I've never strangled. Only anyone. through practice. It's done, not every time. Only through practice. So. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's like those dolls that they have at first aid classes. I reckon <laughs> Schmidt goes to there goes another murder one. classes, and they have they bring out these dolls. She just murdered I, drills. I want you to apply sustained pressure to the neck for five minutes without now breaking stop the bone. before you break it. That's it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just pull up, pull up. That's now, the real again. skill. Because it's all about asphyxiation, not breaking bones. That sounded Very terrible. Nice. All right, moving on. Right. So, <laughs> boom. Uh, so, so Lonnie quickly becomes a suspect as authorities find it odd that the couple who had already separated were going on a romantic cruise together. Mm, so How- did I. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> However, Lonnie was adamant that they had reconciled and were even planning to remarry in November 2006. So, due to a lack of evidence to determine what happened, the case goes cold and Lonnie is free. Hang on a minute. No, 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 we were going to get married. Oh, okay then. Couldn't have been him. Bullshit. We've got evidence that she was in the cabin with him. We've got evidence that she's uh, died before she hit the water. She's been strangled. They haven't got evidence, but evidence of anybody that she else? was in the cabin with him because he's saying he was... He took a oh, yes. pill so and she went to the cup of tea. Someone went and killed her for no could, apparent reason. Could have been well, anyone. Not it could have been those eight blokes from Adelaide or the six blokes from Adelaide. <laughs> no, they were busy. This, this anyway. is the thing about cruises, though. Like you're in a confined space and no one knows what the hell's going on. Mm, yeah. Like you'd think that they would have footage in the hallway that would show her going back into her room. 
happy or on days. balconies. Or on balconies. They could I reckon sing. they do now. They could have like little drones flying. I up. reckon you will when you go. You'll oh, have right, it all yeah. rigged up from home like, being down to Bunnings. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta wear body cam. Yeah, that ring thing. I mean, you know, when someone gets delivers a parcel, you've got a doorbell on the front of your door. <laughs> you've got your the yeah. movement motion for the door yeah. after the thing. Yeah. <laughs> it's very okay. secure. Yeah. <laughs> this is limit, isn't it, Stu? Oh yeah, we've got all this. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing says a holiday like this. <laughs> Cell we've created for ourselves to keep ourselves safe. <laughs> yeah. You won't be to sleep. Oh my god, yeah. it's hysterical. You'll be fine. So anyway, case goes cold. But do they have any other suspects or anything? That was just like it just all feels a bit like oh, can't be asked. All too hard. But but so I know. this is the problem with cruise crimes. But, but part of the problem is that so this is a, crew, a crime that's happened in Italian this waters, international yeah. waters, but the boat's licensed somewhere else. Yeah, that's right. From another country. That's right. Lonnie, well done. So well researched. Oh. Well, so, yes and no, but yeah, go on. But then it should have drowned her in the bath and then thrown her over because then she wouldn't have floated. Just saying. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you for You're your insight. You're an ideas woman, Schmitty. Yeah. Thanks for that insight. Uh, <laughs> well, so I was going to talk to an expert if you need a job done. <laughs> have, you, have, you ever, have you ever seen that show, How to Get Away with Murder, Schmitty? <laughs> I feel like that was a. I don't need to. No, I haven't you. seen it. <laughs> no, um, I haven't. Netflix should have approached you for the second series. I don't well, know. Yeah, that's right. it. Probably on the fourth series. I wouldn't know. I was just joking. But. <laughs> so, uh, in 2008, Schmitty, mm-hmm. Lonnie attempts to transfer $1 million between <gasps> various bank accounts that belonged to his deceased wife. Oh, oh the, Lonnie. The authorities find out and he again becomes the target of a federal investigation. Could you so just repeat, what, what did he try and do? He tried to... To, to, to transfer a million dollars between various bank accounts that belonged to his deceased wife. Oh, that were hers. Okay, so he wasn't yeah. necessarily taking money out. He was moving them within her own... Okay. No, he was trying to put it He's into his trying money. to get them into his, yeah, yeah. Oh, he was. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. He again becomes the target of a federal investigation. However, the case against him fizzles out when Amy testifies before the grand jury on his behalf. So she basically does a whole lot of character referencing and everything and then and says that it couldn't have possibly happened, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, but it did. I'm yeah, impressed it, that um, Mickey had a million bucks in a bank well, account. Well, I'm a bit in 2008. That's a lot of money, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yep. You know, a lot of people have... You know, assets and bits and pieces, but actually to have that in in the bank is that's a lot of money to have in a bank. Correct. By twenty thirteen, Lonnie had left Amy, married his fourth wife, <laughs> and, and subsequently divorced her and was living in Safety Harbor in Florida. I need to see this man. What's he look like? Talk me through it. What age is he and what does he look like? He's in his 50s. He might have even been 60-odd by now. You know when you said at the beginning that they'd met at a law practice, I think. Is he a, yeah, yeah. a quite a senior law? Yeah, quite, and quite a well-known. Okay, so women would find him powerful and attractive and rich and all the rest, that kind of, well, that kind of person. You know, he, would, he would obviously be rich being a lawyer. He was quite well-known. So I think when I say well-known, I think he might have been um, a bit of a personality kind of thing, so not yeah. just... A good a boy, profile, not just yeah, a, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, do your googling. You tell me if you think he's hot. I, didn't I haven't looked yet. I won't look yet. I won't look yet. Hey, yeah, okay. Oh, no, Lonnie no, Cock, right? Yeah. Got it. Cocomptus. Oh, right, Lonnie. Yeah, Cocomptus. got it. It's a nice What's name. Does he look good? Oh, oh, he doesn't look oh. cool. Oh, oh, oh no. Oh, oh hang on. It must be charming. Let's put it that way. Right. Okay. We've got a big bank balance. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So, uh, yeah, so he's now living by himself after um, divorcing his fourth wife. Who was his fourth wife? Do we have any details on her? Is she similar well, to the others? No, I think there probably was some, that, but I cut it out. Okay. Cause, yep. cause I, no I'm worries. Less, I'm less interested in all of that than you are. Sorry, I have to learn no, and go, no, Swanee, I want to know this. I better find out. Oh, no, 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 I didn't mean that. I just, you know, it was, might not be, obviously it's not relevant to the story, but I just was wondering what he'd sort of traded in for. Yeah, yeah. And whether, well, and and whether, because Amy had testified in his favour, correct? Correct. And then he then, they part ways, he remarries, and then he's yeah. already divorced an ex-woman. Correct. Yeah, yeah. So, in, so in 2008, yeah. uh, she testifies in his favour. By 2013, he's left Amy, married a fourth wife, and subsequently divorced her. 
Okay, so, so it he only has short. He only has short. Yeah, but it was. I was wondering if it was like years or something. But that's a bit more, a bit longer than I thought, actually. But there you go. Okay. Yeah. It was then that Amy went to the police and said Ooh. that she wanted to tell the truth. <laughs> what a surprise! Stating that in two thousand and eight she'd been too afraid to do so. And then I only stayed with him until two thousand thirteen. Yeah. Piss off, Amy. Amy had overheard conversations between Lonnie and his best piss off, friend. Amy. Yeah, <laughs> piss off, on. Amy. I mean, you perjured yourself. I've got no oh, sympathy no for it all. You, Amy. Yeah, no, oh, none yeah. at all. I right? shouldn't say you, it. You've got your oh, harsh gosh. pants on today, Schmitty. It must be because you're tired. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's bullshit. She knows I've got no time well. for you, Amy. You'll know, you'll... She was going all along. She's not scared. She was going along with it, hoping that the to money, get yes, the money. Yes. That's right, yeah. Correct. You'll notice when Schmidt is not tired, she's far more accepting. <laughs> <laughs> Am I? All right. <laughs> <laughs> so Amy had overheard conversations between Lonnie and his best friend about killing Mickey and taking matters into his own hands. Uh, Amy said that Lonnie had told her that he'd asked someone to come on the cruise and kill his wife in return for money, but they'd not gone. Amy thought he wasn't serious about it until the events transpired. Oh, didn't she? Oh, he's only joking. Just joshing. Lonnie was pressuring (laughs) her and even threatened to kill her. Amy? Yeah, yeah. According to Amy. That's her story. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I probably did. Maybe. Um, Amy also admitted she had got rid of a computer hard drive that had evidence on because Lonnie had told her to and she was frightened of what might happen if she didn't. Amy agreed to testify against her former husband. Finally, seven years after Mickey's death, Lonnie was arrested and charged with murder. And an inmate claimed Lonnie came to him and attempted to solicit the murder of Amy to stop her from testifying (laughs) against him. He's got four. So, uh, yeah, I I do think there is some truth to what she was saying. Mm. Oh, for sure. The trial was delayed due to legal problems with Mickey's death taking place in international waters, Carla. Yeah. Although finally, so they actually had to work to try to find a reason to even have a case in America for it. Wow. But what they finally worked out that was... Uh, the angle I took was that because the planning had been done in California, yep. they could therefore hold the trial there. So how, this is how crazy the whole cruise thing is, that they're actually sitting there going, God, we might not even be able to do any kind of legal proceedings because it didn't happen in our jurisdiction. This feels like yeah. most of the episodes that I watch of like Law and Order and they're trying to find an angle so they can bring something Yes. To. And yep. you're like, you know, you know someone's committed a crime but it's not going to wash unless you have sort of some thing they yeah. can actually um, and prosecute on. It's all about prosecution. Yeah. Yes, yeah. And, and so Lonnie's a lawyer, <laughs> so word. he's probably given this a lot of thought and thought, well, yes. it doesn't matter. Even if I do yeah. go back, they won't be able to do anything. So in 2020, over 14 years after Mickey's murder, the Contes went to trial. Like This is something that, that if you murdered someone in a similar way on a you know, a cruise in the Docklands in Melbourne. It would be done and dusted within a week kind of thing because it's that obvious. But Is that why you guys are going to the Mediterranean? (laughs) You've made that very clear. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, I don't know why I'm saying that, but it's like, (laughs) you know, like it's 14 (laughs) years it's taken to get to trial. I know. (laughs) Like it's not like there's anything that isn't obvious in this as to what's happened. I think, though, the American system is really slow when it comes to getting people to trial. Like, we've covered lots of things where people sat around in jail for years waiting for their actual proper sentencing or proper trial. Yeah. Yeah. In her opening statement of the trial, Senior Deputy District Attorney Susan Price said Kanasaki at the time was with a man who no longer loved her and had remained with her for financial reasons. Remained with her for financial reasons. And yeah. is that the insurance or is that also because she had that money? Yeah, yeah. Or was that money the insurance? Yeah, no, no. So she had the money, so he was yeah. with her for the money. So Kakontis' former best friend, Bill Price, told investigators that nothing mattered more to Kakontis than money and sex, the prosecutor said. Ooh. She said Kakontis married Nguyen in Las Vegas in 2005 and the two moved in together in Orange. In September of that year, he filed a motion in court to have a judge force Kanasaki to sell their Ladera Ranch home, Price said. There was a dispute between the two whose house this was, adding, as she said, and adding Kanasaki did not want to sell the residence or move out. 
Eventually, Kakontis dropped the issue, left Nguyen and moved back in with Kanasaki, but told Nguyen he loved her and did not want to leave her, the prosecutor said. Kakontis then had new wills drawn up for himself and Kanasaki, according to Price, who said Kakontis was named as executor of his ex-wife's estate. Schmidty, that's why he left and went back. Yep. Soon after, the two made plans to go on a cruise, which was unusual because he seldom went on vacation and was known for his thriftiness, Price said. Before the trip, (laughs) Capontes asked his best friend, private investigator and retired cop, about security (laughs) on cruise ships such as surveillance cameras, she said. There's not much. Mm. Oh, my God. Cacontes picked up an unusual cruise vacation for Americans because it required a flight to Minnesota and then London before boarding the ship. It did seem a hell of a long way to get, like it seemed like a circuitous journey to get there, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The travel agent was concerned his client might not like it because it was a no-frills trip aboard a converted ferry, she said. Was it? Oh. Oh. Yeah, but the ferries over there are quite large. He's like, I'll spend the money on getting there, but, I, you know, it's all right. We, I can cut costs because I'm only going to be on there for a night. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly there. right. I won't be disappointed. I'm not even yeah. going for the You don't cruise. need to go seven. What was it called? You, you had the name there. of it. What was it called? Yeah, it was called Something Escape? the Island Escape. Oh, it's a weird name okay. to think of the med, to be honest. She's just going her going through her. I'm looking at the boat. Her database. Look, she's yeah, she's a hell of a ferry. Like that's not what I would have called a ferry. But I, if I'm looking at the right one, okay, I've got a better sense but they of are, it. It's, they are very big not, ferries over there. Like it's not yeah. like a, a manly ferry. Oh, or God, no, the no, Sydney no. Harbour ones. The ones that have all the cars are, on them and that. Yeah, they, they you look drive like onto them most ships. of the time. Yeah. Yeah, but it's it's only got two tenders and four lifeboats on one side, so. It's a lot smaller than what you're going on. It looks big, but oh I, yeah, no, it's yeah, yeah, yeah it's nowhere yeah, near yeah. the yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Were you saying that just to make me feel a little bit better? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your boats. No, you guys are going on a converted ferry. <laughs> <laughs> a no frills converted ferry. <laughs> it sounds better by the day. Yeah. So Cacontes had specifically asked for a balcony room. It was very important to him. The prosecutor said. To be fair. I like one too, though. And me too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 We always get, as I said, from the outset, we always get a balcony. And I could tell you, I know you all, you know, I think, I hope you're joking when you say you're going to be terrified being on this, but there is nothing like leaving the door open and listening to the. the Oh, yeah, no, that'd be good. You've got to to the people being burned and thrown overboard. (laughs) (laughs) See you later. (laughs) No, it's it's so beautiful. No. Oh, what's that I can hear? Oh, that's someone being raped next door. Oh, what's that I can hear? Oh, that's someone being thrown overboard. I've that experience. I know. They're just the two stories that we've talked about the last think, couple of weeks. I think I just heard that, that small neck bone cracking. <laughs> oh, that's true. Did you hear that? Oh, my God, did you hear that? I just, oh. I could have sworn I heard what that. What was that? What was that? It 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 be on. Quick. It sounds like a gang raping. Quick. Oh, yuck. Oh, I'll shut the door. It's too noisy. I can't sleep. Oh, yeah, oh look, it's double glazed. Just shut it. We won't hear a thing. We're oh, fine. my God. You poor people. So uh, Amy testified against her former husband and told the jury Lonnie had admitted he wanted Mickey killed on the ship. Uh, Lonnie pleaded not guilty. He claimed he and Mickey were planning to get remarried and the cruise had been the start of their new life together. Until he went back home the next day. Correct. He's back with Amy. Yeah, yeah. Jesus. I was so, uh, you know, hadn't even, gutted. That didn't, she hadn't oh, even I can't down. believe it. Oh, bummer. She's gone. I'll back just, to Catherine Tate. What a load of old shit. Yeah. I know. Oh, one day later. Oh, that was a shame. That was, that's not what I, I was hoping for. Oh, well. Next. Well, I'm a bit lonely now. I wonder what Amy's doing. Yeah. <laughs> oh, she was a horn bag. Maybe I'll fly straight back to her. I wonder how much money she had because he's only interested in money and sex, yeah. That's right. Ugh. Uh, So his defence said the injuries Mickey had sustained around her neck and head were consistent with a fall. They said that due to Mickey's arthritis, Lonnie had been the one who had financially supported her, but it was clear the money was tied up in their mutual assets. Mm. In June 2020, Lonnie, then 62 was convicted of first-degree murder wow. and the added conviction of murder for financial gain. That is thing. Murder for financial uh, gain? Yeah, I've never heard that before. Uh, so three months later he faced sentencing. Mickey's brother, uh, Toshi Kanasaki, made a statement. You, Lonnie, 
executed my younger sister on that Mediterranean cruise ship, he said. You strangled Mickey, then you threw her body overboard like trash. You are a vicious criminal, evil person, a cold-blooded killer, a sociopath. Toshi added that Lonnie was rotten to the core and deserved to be behind bars for the rest of his life. Wow. Lonnie continued to deny his part in Mickey's death and again tried to suggest she had taken her own life. I stood by Mickey Kanasaki through significant periods of depression, he said. Till death do us part, in sickness and in health. But not depression. Uh, but not depression. Yeah, good times and bad, no. <laughs> I went to counselling with her. I did everything I could to help Mickey Kanasaki to overcome her depression. Why is he talking about her. her like she wasn't his wife, though, this yeah, Mickey Kanasaki business? Yeah, like, no, why is he right. using her maiden name? I really just, don't like that. Just so they don't confuse her with all, all the other, the people, other have people names that sound like that. Kokanasi. Cock in the what? What was his name? <laughs> Tanasi Kokanakis. Kanex. What's his name? Cock, cock, and oh, Kakantes, you mean? Kakantes, that's it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And what was it? Is that the tennis player? You're, you're talking, talking about, about tennis players. And what's yeah, his yeah. name? Tanasi Kokanakis. The judge was unmoved, saying, "In this court's <laughs> mind, there is no question of the defendant's guilt." The judge wow. was tired, like Schmidt, and said, no, like, "You're a you're a bastard. What you're a load of old shit." <laughs> Uh, he said, <laughs> oh, no, the judge actually said yeah. that. So, I think that's so, what she did, or he should, well, she did well, say yes, without saying that. Much more yeah. eloquently than us, yes, yes. yes. The judge was unmoved, <laughs> saying, what a load <laughs> of oh, shit, yes. before sentencing Lonnie to life in prison without the chance of parole. Good job. Due to the length of the sentence, charges regarding trying to have his third wife, Amy, killed were dropped. Oh, well, because it's no point. It's just going to cost everyone money and he's already gone live anyway. Is that yeah. what we're hearing? Yeah. I think so. And she's not dead. So, you know, no harm, no foul. <laughs> <laughs> I, I must say, at oh, least goodness. at least they're not going, let's spend all this money trying to get him on a second concurrent life sentence. So there you go. That, that my friends, is the rather short but somewhat entertaining story of Laurie and Mickey. Oh, you're so oh fine. Mickey, you're so fine. You're so fine. You play my mind. Mickey. Poor Mickey, though. I mean, no one deserves to be strangled. Oh, no. and she actually grown. looks really lovely. And um, not that not that it looks. Does she? Guess, I, I looked at photos of her. Yeah, I thought I she looked so. like a bit of a hard faced bitch, but that's all right. Who was that? That doesn't mean she deserves oh, to be strangled Mickey. and killed. Jesus, you really are tired today. <laughs> I think you need to go to bed after this. <laughs> <laughs> Before you kill someone, I might have to edit that out. Yeah, Mickey sorry. might have been a lawyer too. Maybe that's why she had some. Was money. she? She well, was I a paralegal. Oh, she was like, oh, that's what you did tell us at the beginning. She was sorry, like yeah. Megan in Suits. Lonnie Kakontis, that name is enough for me. <laughs> Which name? We don't need any evidence. His name is Lonnie Kakontis. That's it. You're guilty. <laughs> you're out. <laughs> that name just threw me. I was like Kakontis. It's sudden. I reckon Lonnie's weirder, isn't it? Yeah, I find that the whole name I find weird. Lonnie. What do you Lonnie reckon Lonnie's short for? I don't know. Lonnie. Lawrence? No. No, it's, it's, Lonnie, it's a Greek. It's a Greek name, isn't it? Kakontis. Is that I'm what okay you say, Lonnie? He's, he's a Greek mum. Kakontis is Greek, surely. Not, to, not that it really matters. I, no, um, I don't need that. I'm intrigued. Alonzo. <sighs> is it? Oh, really? My no. What is the male for... name Lonnie short for? Yeah, it says Alonzo here. In a French. Spanish or Italian. I mean, it's Spanish. Oh, maybe Kukonti we need to know. We Spanish. could probably work out what, what's Kukonti's. Kukonti. Maybe he was like um, Hispanic. All right. Well, I think I'm ready to um, punish him. Yeah, you'll have a grumpy sentence. Here we go. Oh, tired. God, sure. Wind her up. Let her go. Come on. Brace yourself. Well, look, he, he definitely did it, in my opinion. <laughs> no, he did. He's gone. To, he's, he's, yeah, yeah. Everyone else thinks he did too. I yeah. think it's a real shame it took so long to get him actually bang to rights for it. Because he had fourteen years of walking Freedom. around, and yep. yeah, and and you know he cut her life short, which is terrible. It's true. It's kind of like he's only going to jail for his retirement. You know, fourteen years mm. at that age is a big difference, and fourteen it years is, when you're it? older. When you're older, it's like oh, I'm done now. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> your late forties to your early sixties. Yeah. Mm. I agree. So for me, while you've been doing these cruise crimes, a few times I've been kind of doing 
just a very light touch research on nautical punishments, you know, in history. So database Sorry. of punishments. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Can, I, can I just ask? I'm tweaking my database. When, when you say cruise crime, do you also hear the song Freeze Frame? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I do, yes. <laughs> cruise crime. <laughs> dun, 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 I do, dun, every dun, time. Dun, dun. I'm trying to ignore it in my head every time I hear it, but. Well, you've been doing cruise crimes, and you know I did keel hauling, and you were all horrified oh, yes. by keel hauling, and and you're yes. amazed that I knew what it was even before I actually got the correct way of talking about it on Wikipedia. The thing about a lot of the nautical crimes, and you know, this we're talking four or five hundred years ago, or you know, in the last let's say five hundred years to now, yeah. right? So that you know, they people were really brutal toward other people and there were terrible things that happened and and I do I must admit shy away from talking about things like flogging and cat of nine tails. Right. But it really limits the field because apparently that was like the big thing to do when you're on a pirate ship or a naval ship or whatever and you've done the wrong thing. So I was thinking because of what he well I know he strangled well we think he strangled her and killed her before he threw her overboard. But I think let's put him on your ship. Right, like your sixteen. No thanks. No, 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 no. No one else is on it. It's just him. <laughs> just him. And, oh, the, and, the, and the executioner type situation, right? So right. he can't hurt anyone. But it's sixteen stories, I think you said. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's gonna hurt when you hit the water, right? Yeah. And let's go old school and have a walk the plank scenario. Nice. Oh. So, and when they walked the plank, they used to, you know, do nasty things to them, but they would often tie them up as well so that once they were in the water, they couldn't swim away. Because I've always, like, you know, watch, you watch pirate films and stuff and you think, what's the point of walking the plank? I mean, you just dive off. It's, you know, yeah, if you dive properly, you get down and you swim away and, yeah, you might drown, but also you're not dead. But, no, apparently they tied you them are, up. You so are if much you harder. drown. Did you know that? Yes, but also the interesting okay. thing is a lot of pe- a lot of the seamen at the time <laughs> <laughs> didn't know how to swim. You said um, seamen. I did. My um my natural father was a seaman. So oh, he, yes, um, he was. That's <laughs> I'm right. adopted. Uh, that's how I got to the egg. When I was little, there was like a a document that you're given when you're adopted, and it sort of tried to give you an idea of who your parents were without your natural parents, without saying who they were. So it said job. And it said that he was a seaman, which I used to think was disappointing, I'll be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Schmitty, is it true that like in the olden days, um, one of the biggest problems with infertility at the moment is that seamen can't swim? You're shorter tails. You, yes, it, it, clearly they're connected. Because so seamen, seamen couldn't in swim the olden days years ago. Swim. That's and right. Now, today, same problem. Not all of them, but, it, but a lot of people couldn't swim. That's right. When I was talking about seamen not being able to swim, I was talking about people who worked as naval staff. You confuse me all the time. (laughs) You knew exactly what I was talking about, you cheeky. Yeah, so I think I'll get him to walk the plank and we'll tie him up so that he can't actually swim away. I think that's probably pretty awful, but, you know, he can just get out of the water and if he's still alive and have to walk 16 flights of stairs because the elevators are out and then he has to jump off again. Nice. Yeah, Brilliant. that's me. Yeah. Does he go head first or feet first? Normally I think they went feet first because they jumped off the plane. And they didn't as, he, the as he goes dive. feet first, is it true that a whale is swimming very close <laughs> to the surface of the water so he just goes <laughs> and squashes and himself on the, like he hits a really hard surface instead of? Well, I think if you jumped out of the, uh, if you jumped off the sixteen-story boat, it's like hitting concrete. Like seriously, water yeah. is just as hard. Maybe a great white shark with its jaws open. Oh, that waiting would, for yeah. him. Uh, it would go straight into its stomach, <laughs> <laughs> and possibly out its go. tail. Straight into the stomach. <laughs> Do not pass go. Yeah. <laughs> Do you put a couple of buckets of burley in before he uh, jumps yeah. in? Yeah. Well, that's how we got the shark there in the first place. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Good work. That's right. Okay, so that's my nautical punishment, given that nice. we're on the high seas. Horror, <laughs> me hearties. Horror. Swanee, are you ready? I think so. I'm, I'm often sort of outraged with people. I'm not with these people. <laughs> Honestly, Lonnie and Amy disappoint me. They just disappoint me. I don't I don't think that they're, the you losers. Know, I think he's a douche. Mm. That's what I think he is. And I and Amy disappoints me hugely because Amy went along with it when it suited her until it didn't. Then of course, then she's come forward. But that was many years. It wasn't like you know she 
felt a little bit remorse at some point, thought, gosh, this is really not the right thing. I've done the wrong thing. No, no, no. It was it's interesting, so many years the, later. Yeah. The Amy thing, because she said she that, that he'd said he was going to do it and yeah. also that he'd, said he loves her and always wants to be with her before yeah. she le- he leaves her and goes back. Yeah. She was very happy to benefit so, from all that. So yeah. I don't so yeah. I just say that I'm disappointed in you, Amy. Mm. Not surprised, but I am disappointed. <laughs> now <the two laughs> things- I think she's come to the core having heard yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> she's That's very upset. Upset. I'm supposed to say, oh I'm very disappointed. <laughs> Nothing could be harsher. But I'm trying to go back to the sort of the the tenets of the things that seem to be the most important to Lonnie, which were money and sex. And when I think of money and sex and I think of sort of something that's a bit damning, I thought maybe we could give him lots of money and lots of sex but he not be in control. Because when you have the control to have sex with who you want to and have money and the power's all on your side, that's a very different equation than money and sex when you're the person who's being, you know, a victim or being pimped or whatever it is. So I thought maybe I could try and flip it and put his two favourite things, money and sex, and make them his very least favourite things where perhaps he's prostituted out and has no choice with whom he's having sex with, what sex they are, who they were, how they treat him, just so he gets the comeuppance of this is how hideous things can be when you're not the big man who thinks he's in control of everything when actually the control's totally taken away from you. He could go back house, to- jailhouse, uh, yeah. schoolhouse, outhouse. We've got a night. Nut punch, silly limits. <laughs> Nut punch. I think um, he, could, he could go back to the, the room of the Adelaide bikies, couldn't he? Yes. Oh, oh, gosh. Yeah, and they could get photos and everything. Yeah. You know, he just needs to have that oh. idea because I suspect that he's traded on. You know, there are, for someone, I don't know, I am making some assumptions. So that, ordinary. Given by what he's given what he's done and, the, you know, the type of job he's got, the women that he's with, you know, how he just was a bit of a manipulator in terms of how he made the situation work for him. Yeah, I, I have to believe that he was a not a nice person. And, you know, everything was to benefit him, whether it be through money or sex or both. So I just want to use those two things against him to show him that, you know, whilst you're in control, it's a very different very different equation. Mm. Yeah. yeah no Take one. that, Lonnie. Yeah, cut that. Yeah, cut that. And, again, and, again, and again and again and you don't, yes. And what about you, Clarky? What have you got for him? I, I do tend to agree with Carla about Amy. I'm, I'm not 100% convinced that she was... Um, completely innocent in the whole thing but no but in, but in terms of him, really because so, i called that shit early on i know piss <laughs> off amy yeah no, you, you were all over it you and your tired <laughs> pants you got straight to the point so i think he all of the money that he has needs to go to toshi to to share amongst the Kanasaki family. Yeah. Because, you know, he was power of attorney and he obviously got a whole lot of money through this. The, the fact that he married and divorced four different women, the fact that he thinks it's okay to leave and then come back just for the purpose of killing someone for money, you know, it's it's just such a horrible manipulative thing. I do find the marriage thing interesting in the sense that I've – I've been exposed to things in the past where there are, I'm aware of usually men, men who who choose to be with women who don't marry them, right? So for a man and a lawyer to continue to marry women, that's it's something weird, quite interesting it? in and of itself. Mm. I think that has to do, again, with power, what I will get if something happens, all of that kind of stuff. It's, we're talking about like life insurance policies. I think he's doing it because it gives him some kind of, Authority There's a payout. Or, and all, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's not just, I, I think it's all to do with the law and how it will benefit him mm. because it's unusual that, you know, you'd be, why would you get married time and time and time again? It doesn't, I know that people do it, but it's not necessarily the norm, is it? But but also, like, Nick, Nikki sounded as if she might have been Japanese or something with the yeah. Kanasaki surname. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Amy was Vietnamese, Vietnamese yeah. quietly spoken, you know. So I think the people he's picking are probably people who um, yes. he can control and he can. Culturally he can control a lot yes. more. Yeah, yeah. and so, you know, from Amy's perspective, she probably didn't, you know, she probably didn't have anyone else that she could depend on and he. We don't know enough about her to know that. I, I think that's true. right. And But I could see that there could be something in there whereby she was a bit of a victim. To a degree, but didn't really have much control yeah, or much ability to get away. 
Piss anyway, off, Amy. Um, so, yeah, all the money goes to the Kanasakis. I want him to – so because he got 14 years more than he should have outside of jail, yep. I want his jail life to be somewhat similar to Carl Williams, Ooh. who copped a fair whacking with a – Gym. Exercise bike? Dumbbell. Oh, no, the seat of the exercise bike. Oh, the seat of the exercise bike. Is he one of your Melbourne gangsters? Yeah, yeah. yeah. They pulled yeah. the seat out of the exercise bike. And oh, did oh, they don't kill, kill him with him? That's how they killed him. Yeah. 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 Beat yeah. him to death with the seat of an exercise bike, yeah. yeah. Oh, I misunderstood that. Oh, Why? no, they didn't roger him with it. I thought they were going to... Put him on, the, top, took the seat oh, off. No, and they killed him externally. Maybe we should give that to Lonnie <laughs> and then he can do a spin class for as long as he can keep himself off it. <laughs> oh, my God. You just no, keep, I thought, you I just that keep pedalling that bike, no. sunshine, at some yeah, point. I think that's how he <laughs> died. Your legs they, will get tired. They no, belted okay. him over their head with a yeah, yeah. bit of the exercise bike seat. Yeah. Oh. yeah. So I, I don't want him to live past 62 because I feel Jeepers. like. Jeepers. And he I'm the those, tired and grumpy one. He got those 14 years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. He got those 14 years that he just shouldn't have. And this is the thing. I don't know that the cruise ship lines have skin in the game with this stuff. You know, if it was a, a pub or a nightclub, there would be cameras everywhere. I don't know why this isn't the case. Even in 2008, I reckon there were a lot more cameras. So, or 2006. Anyway, let's see um, Schmitty in four weeks' time whether... Whether there's actually got, appropriate you, surveillance, yeah. Can you take photos and send me them of all of the cameras? Happily. <laughs> well, happy to do that so that you can feel right. reassured that on, at least on the celebrity line that we've got cameras. Great. Right okay, on. wow. I'm still reeling from the... <laughs> The spin class from hell. No. <laughs> I can't believe that's how. When you said that, that you killed him, I thought, oh my god, they've pushed him onto that internal injury. Internal injuries. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thought, awful. Oh but no, that didn't happen. No. It was just oh. in your sick mind. Thanks, and you are the oh, oh, no. sick one. No, yeah. I, well, yeah. that's why I'd, I'd never heard of that. Ah, uh, revealed. That revealed. So that, oh. 77 episodes later, or we reveal the truth of <sighs> me. <laughs> I'm only kidding. Uh, you, Swanee, you could write a book on what I've learnt after 77 episodes of podcasting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not sure anything's particularly helpful on a day-to-day level. I, I've no. I'm not worried about more of the things, things that keep you up at night. Yeah, and... Things that keep you up at night. How crazy people are. Well, yeah, but the good thing about it is that on mass, and when you think about it statistically, the, yeah. the crazy people are anomalies. You know, like it's not everyone. That's the good news I just to, just, just to put that out there for anyone who's worrying about this stuff yeah. and feeling anxious it we're pulling out stories over time over whatever and it's anomalous so don't panic all right well i think that was very well i feel very sorry for mickey but it was quite a funny episode so <laughs> <laughs> cheers and thanks for letting me uh, laugh through my tiredness i appreciate it <laughs> miss you already although i'm going to see you next week oh yeah. <laughs> Thanks for listening to Trial by Wine. You can contact us at trialbywine at gmail.com. Please rate, review and subscribe to Trial by Wine on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts. If you'd like to support us, you can become a patron at www.patreon.com trial by wine or visit our website www.trialbywine.com to donate to us. Your support will help us cover many more cases and apply wacky sentences. We really appreciate you listening and hope you tell everyone about us. Our cover art is by John Christo and music is by Beauchamp from pixabay.com.